Hello world, how's it going? Welcome to my fish room tour series. I had to break it down in series since there's so many tanks in here. We've got seven different sections. We've already covered this main fish room section here. I do have playlists of fish room tours, also my fish room updates. I will put that in a card for you. We've That was section one, and then we've got the office section, which there's a big rack in here, more tanks over on the office, blah, blah, blah. That was section two, and then in here, section three, we covered that. That was the guest bedroom, and now it's time to move on about here into the utility room and the hall room. I do have some of my fish art displayed. My foyer here is kind of a mess. I actually got some stands here. That's a double 125. That's my drying rack. Extra utility rack. I need to move all this into storage. Here is one of my auxiliary QT sections. So if my QT, util, my QT upstairs is full, I will use this in case there's like some crazy killifish auction because sometimes I just get a little crazy, go out of hand, and I buy a lot of killifish. Mostly to spread to you guys, but I do got a little refrigerator down here. Cleaning this stuff up, got nets, my uh, sink. That's how I do my furts. I make my own furts. I've got a video on that if you guys want to see that. Here are the tanks. Here's some of the water systems. So, this is the main house line here. And with the water, as far as how it comes in, goes into a pre-filter first, comes through here, comes back around into the UV sterilizer, into this carbon block here, which is great having these if you guys have got a big fish room. Very, very handy and definitely recommend that. And then I do got a tankless water heater because I can't keep up with the uh, big tank. We've actually got a pretty decent sized tank water heater, but that thing couldn't keep up. So in here, it all goes into there, into a shower valve, which I hardly even use that anymore. I just use these up here because I get a lot better flow rate out of it. And it's easier to dial in than that. But I could go straight through here. This is just to tell me the temp. I go straight through here and up, and it goes off into different sections, like that goes to the garage, this goes over into the utility, uh, so on and so forth. But that goes straight through tap water. And then right now, as you can see, this is closed. They're actually all closed right now. This one's closed, because I like to keep the pressure off the other valves. But I keep that closed, and then if I want to use the RO, I open that up. Then it hits another carbon blaster to another pre-filter, into the membrane, into the RODI, and then up and out. So I can do RO or tap water. Now eventually I do want to plumb a system up for this QT where I can have it overflow and uh, drain off into the sink. But then I want to like age and store some water in here, kind of like a, another sump. And I'll make it planted or whatever. That way it can just, uh, I can add my water through it and then it can just do water changes through that. And then it would just flush the excess water back out. So it would just kind of flush it, which would be great to have. I just kind of waiting to find the right tank or thing for that and get the money to do the project. There's so many projects around here. So easy to get to throw your money just right back in. And So as far as the fish I got here, this is one of the Tiger Mosaic Half Moons I got at Aquatic Experience. Not this year, but last year. Here I've got some, um, what are these? Oh, these were a special one I got from Steve Smith in Columbus. I'm not sure what you would call these. Red snakeskin guppies, maybe something like that. I believe some will get that geysen fin on them. Here I have some uh, Blue Dream shrimp. And then here I have some um, bucket fish. So these actually came out of the bucket. Sometimes they find their way in the bucket due to the hose. And then here I've got some more Blue Dream. I think these are bucket fish too. Or no, just more Blue Dream. I don't know why that one has red in it. 
I can get him out. But keep in mind, these are all QT. And then I got a couple rainbow fish in here. Those also got in the bucket. I think these may even be more bucket fish. Haley does my water changes. And then these are a cool type of handler I got from a and Aquatics. Which I've only got the males left so far anymore. Then here is a wild type actually. These are the Camp Pomas. Blue steak or I think blue snake antler NR31. That's what they traded off to me for. And then in here, we have a blue Galaris killifish. There he is. Which I usually try to find these guys home. And we got Etzelai, Scriptosemian, Etzelai, male and female. We got a, a Aganazi female. I don't know what happened to their label. I'm not sure why they're not labeled. We got a female Oceri. And then we've got female in a tube, balloon, something like that. Then the rest are just empty. And then in here, we've got some tanks. So we have 40 gallons, 40 gallon, 20 gallons, 75 gallon, 75 gallon, 40 gallon, 40 gallon. So let's start with this one. 40 gallon down here. We've got the Fire and Platinum Ice Guppies. These things are absolutely awesome. we got a bunch of pearl weed floating on top. Needle Leaf Java Fern, which actually needs to be pinned back down into the rocks. That's where it normally is supposed to stay. But check out these guppies. This is why I call them Fire and Ice, because they have like this blue and red sheen to them and then sometimes they get the, like, this blue on their head but even the females have absolutely awesome colors look at that these guys are real cool you guys won't find these elsewhere either I paid a hundred bucks for the parents and you have to get at least two pair I don't sell them for that much I sell them for way less than that a really cool fish. And then here we have some red sapphire dumbo guppies. The red and blue ones. Now they don't all breed out true. And I've got a couple lines of these I've tried. Even with the Santa Claus ones. They don't. I had some of the other ones as well. But you do get some nice ones out of them, like those guys. Even that guy with just a little bit of the Dumbo on them. The females have a little color in them. They want to have Geisen fins. That is weird. Who's that? Huh. It's not a worm or nothing. It have been like the fin. I've seen them have that. What you guys will see some of the Geisen fins here. In a little bit. Actually in this fish room. And then we've got Proweed in here. I'm not sure what this plane is. It's not a sword. It's not a crib. I think it's a Pontagitan of some sort or something. Looks like I still got some shrimp going on in here too. Which the probably actually should be done on the bottom. That's how I would prefer it. But over here we've got a 75 gallon. This thing is doing phenomenal. Kind of hard to really get a good picture of it due to the lack of space in the utility room. As you can see that bucket's probably like, I don't know, 40 inches. Not sure, maybe 48. Anyways, we've got a uh, willow moss in here. Really cool moss. We got lots of buches and anubias. We've got a bronze crypt. It's not looking very bronze right now. We got Bacopa Carolina. It's actually shrimp in here too. 
There you see some blue dreams. Uh, more blue dream. It's actually a lot of blue dreams in here. Kind of hard to see them in the Bacopa though. We do got baby fish in here as well. Quite a bit of baby fish. But you'll see what the possibilities of those are here in a second in the other 75. And then I got Rotalia, Rotundifolia growing up from the top. And then a lot of rock pile over there. And somebody asked me what I use in a lot of my tanks. It's mostly Eco Complete. And then this Carib Sea Sand, which the Carib Sea Sand I actually get some of my best growth out of. And then my buckets, as far as my buckets, I actually have them on remote system too. That way I can start them whenever I need to. There you can hear it going. I'm gonna shut it off. And back here I have 20 gallon. These are a rummy nose group. I was trying to get them to spawn. Got a little mop in there. These guys are all over the place. But look how healthy they are. And this is no filter. They have no airline, no filter. They do have a separate heater because the rummy nose do prefer nice warm water. Absolutely love that fish. One of my favorite tetras. And in here I have a line of blue guppies. I believe these were acquired from the IFGA. These are the pineapple blues. Absolutely beautiful. And then we got the Bacopa Carolina. With some, I think that... I don't know, that's got the tiger stripes to it. Is that tiger sedge? I don't even know if they have tiger sedge. Or either really short tiger vowel. Not 100% sure. Really nice blues. Wish I could get better lighting. Oh, there we go. Man, you could really see them. Sometimes with these guppies, especially the blues I've learned, it's all about the lighting. If you can't get a proper light on them, they really don't pop. But man, when you do, it's phenomenal. Phenomenal. Alright, and then over here we have some of those Geisen guppies I was telling you about. Where they get these long fins. Right there. The females tend to more than the males. From what I've heard. But a really cool line. Um, I can't remember. Yeah, these are black and white pastels. With the Geisen fins. Man, be nice. They're in here reading though. We got the Bacopa Carolina again. We got some more Nuri Rosa Maiden. Like I mentioned, I've just been throwing this stuff everywhere. I should probably be about ready to start selling some. Just wanted to stock up first. Because it's not an easy plant to get. Then over here in a 40 gallon. We have the group of black Moscow guppies. There's an absolute ton of them. There's actually Placos in here too. We've got Rotalia, Colorado. We've got a Nubius. I believe that's Coffifolia. It's actually a big fuse back there behind all these guys. There's a Sturba Tetra in here that I've been trying to catch for like a ever. <laughs> there I see a plaque underneath this log. Let's see if I can sneak up. So right underneath that log, there he is. Can't remember which ones those are though. Got some babies eating off that. Which that log's actually tied to a brick. That's one I got from my backyard. It was just floating in my pond. Stuck it out on my deck for a little while. Let Mother Nature take care of it. Put it in here. It's kind of a softer wood. Placos absolutely love eating off of it. You can just see the grooves and notches just torn out of it. Which is awesome. And then more of this Nuri Rosamated Crip. A lot of it. There's actually a lot of Placo caves in here. Like there's a Placo cave there. 
couple there. I was hoping to get them breeding, but with that Sturbacori, I mean, I see another Pleco back here. I don't think it's going to focus in on him, but he's back there. Oh yeah, there you can kind of see his fin move. And he moved. So I don't even know if they're in here breeding or not. Uh, uh, Sturbo's actually back there. But, can't focus on them. But yeah, there's the Black Moscow's. That one's actually got a shop light on it. So that's just one from Home Depot or something. Can't remember where I got it. And in here we got Lymphnophilia Aromatica. We have the Half Moon. I think these were called Half Moon Dragon Mosaics or something like that. These are the ones from Aquatic Experience. They've been growing so slow to take, to take off and breed. But there's some really cool ones in there. Like the colorations on these guys. It's absolutely crazy. Even the females got a little color too. But they're starting to go little by little. And look, that one's got a lot of air running too, but look at the hair algae. And usually whenever I see a little hair algae start forming in my tanks, that's when I just kind of back off the ferts a little bit too. And just like give it a day or two. And usually, most of the time, it'll bounce itself out. And here I have the Dumbo Panda Guppies. Absolutely awesome strain. You guys saw these in the main fish room. With that long dorsal fin. Look at that. It's crazy. Oh, well, she didn't got one. He's got a little one. Some of these, are, they're just absolutely crazy. Like that one. Look at that one. Look at that female. That one's got some black on her. She would be definitely a breeder, for sure. I'd pick her as a breeder. Then we got some Barrier. Barteri. Anubius, we've got the cup of folio back there. We got some Venezuela anus type of Cory cat. And then I can't remember if there's two types in here or just one. There's actually a ton of these guys. Really cool Cory. And we got the guppy grass. This thing used to just be full of guppy grass. And in here we've got some, uh, what are those, Huteroy Crips, and then there's some Buche in there too. And here's Awesome Tank. This has a lot of rare fish in it. This is where, these are the fish that had the babies in the 75 down below. So this is a Glossolephus maculosus. You see this rainbow fish here. These guys, absolutely beautiful, beautiful fish. And then here we got the Pyrolina Vitatis. It's kind of like a type of splash tetra. Slash pencil fish kind of thing. Which they actually have eggs right now up there. They do it quite often. Boom. Eggs. Which I can just collect that off of that airline tube if I want to. Put it in a container. Then hatch them out. But they are beautiful fish. Get that little red fin on the bottom too. Then I've also got C. Alani in here. Which they're not on their best color at this moment with this lighting. They're actually uh, the holy grail of rainbow fish. According to Gary Lang. He mentioned that in an Amazonist magazine. Then we have the Procatopus Simulus here. And I've actually got a lot better footage of these guys. And like their true colors. Matter of fact, let me go get the flashlight. Let's see if this helps any. I don't want to blind them either. Oh man, yeah, it's hard to get above them. Let this shine from below. Oh, why is this ain't working? Yeah, it's not working good. I'm just freaking them out. I don't want to freak them out. But if you guys want to see them in a really, really good, good color. Like just totally flared up and showing off. I got a video where I'm breeding these guys out. And I talk about it. And then those guys are featured. All the fish. The glass lepis maculosus is one of my favorite rainbows right now. At this moment. 
Now I got some Rangeri, uh, Nubius, and then more Barteri, and then we got the Rotalia Rotundifolia up there, growing like a marsh. But yes, this is the utility section. Where we keep a lot of guppies and then move some stuff around for breeding. Things are going to change with the guppies here probably. Because I'm going to try to selectively breed more than colony breed here in the future. Alright, so there you have it. There's the utility section. What all is going on in it. And hopefully you guys learned something as always. Like whether it's just been a tidbit or maybe even a new type of strain of guppy or whatever. Or fish, rainbow fish. Because those rainbow fish, most of those fish in there are pretty rare. And yeah, I just hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. Leave me a comment in the comment section. Sharing is caring for sure. And um, yeah, let's do all that YouTube stuff. Let's get this channel going. It would be very much appreciated. I'm trying my best to share everything with you guys and really get this going now. So I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, everybody. Peace. Have a great one.